Shalom, this is Mitch Glazer, President of Chosen People Ministries, coming to you for another week of praying for the peace of Jerusalem and for Jewish people to come to faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Thanks for being part of our prayer team. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. We are in uh, at the end of week 15 of our still sort of a lockdown. And even though New York has gone to phase two, we're not opening our office yet. People are still working from home and things are going quite well. And we're not sure where things are. So we're just going to sort of take our time. But we've been able to do a lot of ministry. A lot of it's been online. And uh, we've learned to uh, be able to share the gospel. And we've seen the, the Holy Spirit work in power over Zoom and over the phone and you name it. And so we've learned that there are no limitations uh, with the Lord. And so let me tell you a quick story about uh, a young man in Israel. I call him M. Um, and M is uh, originally from Uruguay, moved to, the, uh, to Israel, not the United States, when he was a teenager, and um, went through high school, went into the army, and uh, got out of the army, got a good job, and uh, was going to do his bagrut, which means uh, his high school exams to be able to move on to university. And just as everything was about to come together for M, COVID-19 hit. And then also somebody uh, he cared about deeply uh, uh, passed away. And so uh, M was sitting at home and of course his life was on hold and he was spending a lot of time online and reading and getting ready for the Bagrut if he, uh, one day he could take those exams. Of course, nobody knew how long the lockdown was going to be, particularly in Israel. And, and so he was looking online one day and saw one of our Isaiah 53 ads uh, on Facebook. And uh, this ad is a really cute ad. It, we, we produced an animated dancing Isaiah. And uh, it's, he's a cross between a Hasidic rabbi and Isaiah the prophet, however he would have looked, with robes and sandals and everything. And he, would, he spun around to... Hasidic Jewish music, very lively, and then said, uh, send away for a book written by uh, somebody who uh, is commenting on what I wrote in chapter 53 of the book of Isaiah. And, uh, and so, of course, that someone is me. And so uh, M was reading it, ordered the book, and got the book. And then uh, one of our staff couples called M a few weeks later, asked him how he was doing, reading the book, and whether or not he had any questions. He had tons of questions. Seems that he had been really searching for God, and this pause gave him some time to think about it. The fact that so many loved passed away recently really opened him up, and, uh, and he was just deeply concerned about spiritual things. And so our staff talked with him four or five times. They started meeting by Zoom and studying the Bible together. And then one of our very adventurous uh, young staff members uh, sent M a Hebrew New Testament. She went down to the post office, went through the whole thing, and, uh, and not a lot of people were going to the post office. And so sent him the Hebrew New Testament. He began reading that. And after what was actually a relatively short amount of time, probably about four or five weeks, uh, M prayed with our staff couple to receive Jesus as his Messiah. And then they began meeting for discipleship again over Zoom. And then uh, finally, uh, they got ready to talk about immersion, baptism. And uh, M, I guess, got a little concerned and he kind of disappeared for a couple of weeks and then, praise God, came right back in and said, yes, you know, I want to get uh, baptized. And they're working on that now as to uh, Israel, of course, is, uh, was locked down, was set loose. And now there are, uh, are m uh, many instances of COVID-19 arising and people have a lot of infections. And, and so we're not sure where Israel is going to land, but we're quite sure that sometime in the very near future that M will be able to get immersed and demonstrate that he died with Yeshua and rose in resurrection power with the Savior of the world. And so I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. It's a, 
a wonderful uh, sort of cherry on the cake to uh, so much of what we've done both in the United States and Israel and in the other countries where we minister. Uh, we have now seen all of our worship services in, uh, increase. Uh, we, we, instead of counting people, we count uh, computers uh, watching our services. And God's been really good all over the globe. We've got dozens of worship services and Bible studies going every week. And people are watching, coming to faith, and, um, and we are, are growing. And now we're getting ready to think about a reopening. So some of our congregations are already meeting in person. A few of our Bible studies are meeting. We're being very cautious. Uh, but in Israel, they're being even more cautious. And so because there is uh, a lot of reinfection, we've decided at our Ramat Gan Center, Ramat Gan is an urban suburb right outside of Tel Aviv. You can walk to Tel Aviv from Ramat Gan. Uh, it's also where they're putting in a, a light rail. And so it's a great spot. And when things are going normally, we rent this place and it can fit about 60, 70, sometimes 80 people. And we have Bible studies. We have evangelistic lectures. We have children's programs. We have uh, Shabbat dinners. Um, we have uh, concerts. And so we have a full staff there, and it's a great outreach. And we've really been able to reach a lot of people uh, for the Lord. Uh, but we've been doing all of those same things through Zoom. Not quite the same, uh, but we're getting ready to think about opening. And so I'd love for you to pray for Ramat Gan, our Ramat Gan Center, our Greater Tel Aviv Center, we call it sometimes. Because M shows us the same thing we've been seeing online, uh, with our, our, our Hebrew campaigns, Facebook campaigns, and also what we've seen in Ramat Gan. Young Israelis are open to, to the gospel. And we, we're so excited and we can't wait for the full-blown opening of reopening of our Ramat Gan Center and for all of our, our staff in, in Israel and around the globe beginning to have that heart-to-heart, -heart, person to person, and maybe face-to-face -face and mask-to-mask. -mask. We'll take it any way oh, we can get it, but we're looking forward to having that, that connection again, uh, that very personal connection with people. But we have not been limited uh, by it. And we're so thankful for the folks that have prayed for us, like you, and we're so grateful for those who are supporting our ministry. And I mean, I really thought that uh, the support was just going to go down, 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 down. And instead, the Lord has kept it uh, steady because people have been sacrificial. They figured out how to give online and to and other ways. And so we're just very grateful. We are going full steam ahead. And uh, I'm just praising God for the good things that he's doing. So continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that the Prince of Peace, Yeshua the Messiah, would reign in the hearts of Jews and Arabs, and all those who live in Israel and all those who live around the globe, we pray that they would come to know peace, a peace that passes, surpasses all understanding, a peace that only comes when you know your sins are forgiven, that you've been cleansed, and that you now have entrance into the Holy of Holies, into the very presence of God through the Messiah, Jesus, who intercedes on our behalf. And so we pray that many, many Jews and Gentiles will know the incredible peace that comes from knowing that you have a personal relationship with the God of the universe who loves you and who created you. And I pray that you have that relationship and that it's precious to you. It's precious to me personally, and I hope it's precious to you. Well, we thank God for you. Please keep praying for us. And I pray again that the peace of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, will fill your heart, your mind, and your home. Shalom. God bless you.